I, I'll be honest with you. I think we would kill it um, on the show because again, like I said, we're actually, our first product, it's a consumer grade product that has a better price point than most of them with more value prop. So just one portion of our entire roadmap has more tangible value than just about any other, any other quote crypto project out there in my personal opinion. Uh, Ryan Jones, co-founder, tell me something. New M, new M, no M. What is correct? How to say it? Oh, it's not even new M. It's new. That's new. how you've new. Yeah. That means one, one, one. My viewer, he he texted me a few weeks ago. Yura, it's not new, uh, new M. It's not an uh, M. It's new. He okay. was right. From today, I promise. It's new. Yeah. Ryan, I, I personally discovered this project, I think two months ago, maybe two, more than two months ago. And uh, I have I have some uh, some part of my uh, of my YouTube channel only for members. Uh, there's good numbers of people. And uh, I told I told them, guys, you know something? I found something. I like it because uh, last year, last two years, we I, I saw lots of music projects. From from this space, uh, lots of them uh, just start today, and after 24 hours, they speak only about uh, shield my project, about price, about uh, new exchange tomorrow, about new exchange to uh, one month ago, and something about that. And I says, look, these guys, they are doing something something different. You know, I I, I found this. I tried to in investigate this like like some detective, and I I can't find anywhere that guys. Who work here speak about listing, about new exchange, about price. They speak only about their project, you know. And that was first, first, first things I like. And then I I found second one. It's on Cardano. If if you are in Cardano, you are part of family, you know. And it, it's no matter when Cardano will go on a new all time high or something. People who love Cardano. They never go out, but there's one more thing. People who love Cardano, maybe they'll try to find lots of other projects on Cardano. And that's my reason. We have lots of good projects here in the space. Why Why Cardano? Why Cardano? <clears throat> well, my typically, honestly, I give three answers, and they're very, very specific. Um, the biggest one being native assets. If you're on Ethereum, ERC-721, ERC-20, just that particular standard, right? How does a token exist on ETH? It's an actual contract, right? So um, that pulls computational power from the network to exist. On Cardano, a native asset, once you've created it, it exists. And it has the same rights and privileges as the base asset, ADA. <clears throat> so for, for us, that's a big, big deal for, for a couple of things. Um, one, we want to pass the grandma test, right? That's That's a big thing for us. And we want this to be universally acceptable um, and, and, and usable for everybody. So what we don't need is somebody's grandmother interacting with a smart contract, ERC-721, um, and somehow Trojan horsing um, into her wallet and draining her wallet, right? So yes, there's that human element of error involved if you interact. If, if I click on this, I'm going to interact with a smart contract um, and I screw it up, then yeah, it's still on me. But native assets that removes an extra layer of risk, right? So you can't actually send somebody a native asset to their wallet. And if they just interact with it, it can't do anything nefarious. Um, so that that's a big deal. The other thing is we want high assurance code, right? So Cardano is built on Haskell. Um, you know, Haskell is the same system that they use for systems where if something were to go wrong, there would be death. Right, there could be mass, you know, massive uh, death, and that that's that's why they use in the aeronautics, they use Haskell in the banking sector, they use Haskell for a lot of the low end stuff, um, and then the other big thing is we we need um, basically we need to know our our cost, right? And so if you have a fee market um, and you can't predict how much a transaction is going to cost, then you can't run an effective business, right? And so for us, our profits are so they're so thin because we're not designed, we're not trying to make a big profit on this. This is to make, to keep the lights on for the protocol to work to where people can use it. And the, and the bulk of the money goes directly from consumer to artist and vice versa. 
right? So that's a big thing is we, we know our transaction cost and we can predict that before the transaction goes through. Um, and that's a very, very big thing. Not to mention the fact that, yes, I've been around the Cardano space since 2017. Um, it's still minting blocks. It's still going. And if I'm going to build something that I hope my grandkids, when they get to use, it needs to be, I need to trust that it's going to be around, right? And I feel very strongly that Cardano, that you mentioned it, the community, um, it's not being built to be a flash in the pan that'll be obsolete in five years. It's built to be a bedrock of something that's going to last long after I'm gone. And so I think as a building a business on, on top of blockchain, we have one added risk. You have to pick what chain you're going to do your business on. And I feel like Cardano is an appropriate choice uh, because it has staying power. And I think it has longevity in mind. And so that's another big, big part of the equation. Um, and not to mention the community is fantastic. It's very much grassroots. So. It's first time I have it's first time I have someone from other side who who talk uh, more than me. Hey, I'm shocked. sorry. I'm shocked. I'm shocked, man. Okay. <laughs> but okay, uh after everything uh you told me uh, I must I must tell you I had a wrong opinion about why Cardano because huh? my I'm I'm marketing guy, you know, I work all my life in, in marketing and my first opinion was, you know, if you want to make some project, you have lots of good crypto project there maybe maybe there is some uh some similar project like cardano and you can do everything on that project but i was thinking and i was wrong that you pick cardano because there is few million few million people who love cardano and that's the big market you know i, I was thinking like some marketing guy okay ah. now you have product and on other side you have few million people who are like family, Cardano family, and they all speak about project on Cardano. In and maybe there is some project better than Noom, but they it's on other other uh, blockchain, and they do, they don't like that project because they like only Cardano project. You know that was my opinion, and I says, oh my god, it's good move because Cardano is one of the biggest community in the in the world. You know because if you have project and nobody use it, where's well, the sense? You know that yeah. was my opinion. But sorry, ah. but I'm only just marketing guy, you know, sorry. <laughs> no, it's it's totally fine. Um, you know, here's the deal. It's truly Cardano. Yeah, the community is is a superpower. Like it truly is. And it's something that I don't think people truly appreciate for what it is. Um, but I, you mentioned, you know, maybe there's another music project that's better. That's on another chain right now. And to be honest with you, there's not. Um, and I'm not saying that from a bias standpoint. I mean, I guess I technically am biased. But the point is, is that, you know, the first product we're actually turning on is we're not even competing with crypto projects. We're competing with mainstream products, which we're, that, that's a big play, right? And, and so our consumers uh, for this first product, it's not crypto folk. It is traditional, everyday users. And yep. so that's that's a big part of the equation that I, I think that nobody right now in the crypto space has really gotten to that point. It's all about, hey, come to crypto to do to do stuff in crypto. What we're saying is, hey, you get to do all your traditional stuff, but with a crypto twist, right? Great. You get extra added benefits. So, you know. You mentioned your, your mom, your grandpa uh, before. Uh... I think my mom and my grandpa and your mom and your grandpa it's too uh, too hard to to understand everything about uh, about this new world uh, it's coming and I would like to talk with you like some newbie you know uh, I'm let's imagine I'm some music and guy from I don't know from England from Liverpool from from London from Paris no matter I have maybe 10,000 followers on uh, on on Instagram I have my Twitter account I make music every day. I live my passion. I have maybe maybe few thousand people who who buy my music and something on other platform. And then I first time I hear something about Noom. What Noom can offer to me and other music and guy, you know, in the in the old world. Why why would I choose you? So first off, if you're living your passion with about ten thousand followers, then you're already breaking the mold because that doesn't necessarily happen um so here's the deal 
what we are going to do, right, is we're building out an ecosystem. And the big, at the very most high level, we're building out an entire ecosystem. I'm a musician first before anything. And my entire purpose of behind this was I want a place to where I can live from the time of conception, right? Like the time that my, I first create my composition to the time that I retire. That's and incredible. inside that, what pieces of the puzzle do we need? What tools do I need to do that? Right. And so there's a lot of pieces of that puzzle. Um, I don't want to go, I'm not going to get that into the weeds, but I think to answer your initial question, just right off the bat, we have a distribution service that's going live in this summer. And we've already been doing this as a white label, as a white glove um, with a couple of handful of artists. But the very first product that any musician without having to deal with us is going to be able to use is a distribution service that allows them to fractionalize the ownership of their streaming IP rights. And, and so what you've just gotten there is you have to use distribution service. Like you can't not use it to get your music out to any of the platforms. You've got to distribute it, right? So you're going to use a service. So why not use a service, right? That lets you then have your foot in the Web3 world that allows you to then you're basically tokenizing your ownership over the streaming royalties is what it is. And so when you do that, that lets you actually create extreme liquidity for your music. And it really turns your music itself into the product as opposed to you, the artist as the product, right? So it's, it's reestablishing value back to your music. Um, and so that's the first thing we're doing. And, you know, that is a value prop because I, we literally had artists that came in and they made 10 years worth of streaming royalty income in a week on the sale. Um, from an artist standpoint, you can't beat that. Uh, you literally gave away ownership over the income the streaming royalty income, but in exchange, you made 10 years worth of income in a week. So what has that done for you as an artist? Well, that's basically removed the financial need for a label because the financial purpose of a label is to front cash to artists so they can then go and create, right? Well, now you've just crowdsourced that essentially from your fan base, but here's the difference. Crowdsourcing doesn't necessarily bring your people along on the journey right? It doesn't give them a financial incentive to really, that's most of the time when you crowdsource, people are getting a product from you, right? This is different. Buying a CD or buying a digital album is not the same level of fan, of a fandom as somebody who is, you, your monetary and financial success is directly related to the success of that piece of music that I, the, the, the people are going to stream it right? Or things are going to happen with that. That is you as a consumer choosing to go an extra step and go, hey, I'm not just going to buy the CD that I get to listen to and that's it. I'm going to actually buy this ownership and then this, I'm going to be with this artist all through their career because I want this piece of music to be big, right? Because that's yeah. going to then financially incentivize me to make sure that that goes out there and it gets big, right? So that that's part of the equation um, as a value prop. For an artist, so why would you want to do anything with Web3? Well, this is a big reason why, because you're breaking down barriers to connective, to be able to connect directly with your, your fan base. And you're turning your fans into something other than just fans, right? And that's powerful. People have forgotten the power of grassroots and the power of word of mouth. Um, and if you look in the hip hop community, they, they've never forgotten it. They've been able to go platinum with a very small community of people that are an inch wide, but a mile deep in their engagement, as opposed to traditional market, which is a mile wide, cast a very wide net, but only have very shallow connection with-, yeah. with Connection is everything today. One of the most important uh, word you said, it's this summer show will begin. I think from a, from a consumer standpoint, yes. Now the show's been going on for about two years now, um, yeah. but we've done a lot of, lot of backend work to make it to where the front end is easy to use. Um, if I if I understand correctly, it's something like for people who don't go deep deeply in in project and everything. It's something like you are on some football ground and there is one little kid who play very good, and you have only two decisions: you will wait few years, and when he play for uh, first team, you buy ticket and watch, or you have other 
other option you call his mom and dad it has and and you says let's sign contract i'll give you money everything next few years but when he play for barcelona for real madrid for manchester i'll take 15% of his salary something like that that is a very good analogy with one one caveat in that second scenario you were depending upon that person to go out and get better right yeah when it comes to this you are helping them get exposure that's the big difference you're not waiting for one person to go do work you are part of that work yourself if yeah. that makes sense right yeah, so you're, you're spot on um yeah that that's a big deal you know and and think about this from a and music is big industry well think about this it's a one trillion dollar industry with all the yeah. rights one tr with a t trillion um prime example if you have a listener you for example let's say you were on the noom streaming app you found a piece of music and you're like hey i really like this music i like this piece of music i like this artist oh he's selling part of the rights to this oh this is awesome well let me buy part of these rights fast forward 10 years down the road you still own part of these rights by the way they're still generating income because people are listening right and oh by the way the artist now has gone platinum or the artist is now an international we name they're internationally renowned and now you still that, have your part and you still have your part and it's still being streamed and the streams have increased and now the ownership has intrinsic value how much is it worth well who knows that's up to the market to decide but you can say that i know that this certain percentage generates x amount every month so it has to have at least this much value amazing right so and that's just for streaming and we haven't even talked about the other types of ownership that you can have. And that's part of the equation for Noom is that we're going to essentially, you're, you're gamifying ownership. If I release a piece of music, you have two big things. You have a master rights for the recording, and then you have mechanical for the composition. Well, let's say I listen to this piece of music and I go, I like this. I wanna, I wanna have skin in the game. So I wanna buy some streaming role. I wanna buy some master rights. Well, guess what? You can't buy them yet until you have skin in the game and, and other parts of the ownership that have less control. So now let's picture a world where if I am an artist and I'm releasing a song and let's say I want to give away or I want to sell 20% of my master rights. Well, I'm going to say, hey, dear consumer, if you want to get the opportunity to purchase part of my masters, you're going to have to have skin in the game, which means you're going to have to own part of my streaming, part of my sync, part of my mechanical, part of my terrestrial, a part of everything to open access to get to the masters. <clears throat> and so then that just takes it to a whole nother level. And so here's the beauty of it. Our tech stack for fractionalizing ownership, it works for all the different types of intellectual property rights. The thing that we have to actually adjust and change is the legal contract and legal document for each of the types of ownership. Right. So that's the that's the only part of the puzzle that we have to we have to adjust and it takes money. And then there's also one part of the equation of of Noom is not just we want to do only on chain because, yes, that's great. Anybody can map royalties for things that live just on chain. Right. But if you want to get into the real world where it's off chain stuff, things that interact in the real world, you have to you have to know where the levers of power lie and you have to play with them and you have to pay to play. And you have to build infrastructure and then how it works is that people will see there's a better way and they'll eventually adjust you have but to build you do and you have so to build one of the most important things i saw lots of lots of music project i need my my whiteboard yeah. uh i saw lots of music music project last two years and you know uh first first step first step all of all of them made you know what it was they sign some contract with some very popular music guy or something, you know. Then second one was contract with one big YouTuber. Uh, uh, third one was uh, they pay big adverts on one of the biggest uh, news channel about crypto. Nobody speak about progress, about project, about... By the way, this is not sponsored Twitter or something, something like that. People must... Must know that I, I found this project a few months ago and we speak about this project every day. Every day in my uh Wow. 
every day in my in my channel in my part of channel only for for members and uh, my guys told me uh, if you can get someone from project let's talk about about project more and that's only reason why we speak today and uh, lots of my guys ask uh, ask me uh, if i can ask you something like that uh, because they would like to know more information about the token utility about yeah. token utility, about uh, about Noom, what can uh, investors do with token? Why token? You know. Yeah. So let's talk about the token. So it's gonna it's gonna serve a couple of functions. <clears throat> um, the first one that's already live is obviously governance. And now, when projects say governance, a lot of times uh, that means a Discord group and whatnot. No, no. If you look at our, if you go, uh, it's vote.noom.io. We actually partnered with Sunday Swap to build out our governance solution. And we've already had two rounds of governance votes. Um, and it's a very elegant solution. Uh, you, you link your wallet, and then it gives you your voting power based off of how much Noom you have in that wallet. Um, and so we, we, and we follow through with those, those we call them numocracy, um, with, those, with those votes, right? But now here's the deal. We are eventually going to shift this to where it's, it's a DAO, right? To where it's not a, are they going to abide by the vote? It's we have no option but to, right? And that's that's a that's a big thing. If you look at a lot of DAOs, there, there have even been DAOs to where they'll make a vote, but then the DAO does the opposite because that's not the vote they wanted. Um, so at that point, what's the point, right? That that defeats the purpose of governance. You have to abide by the rules of the vote. So that's that's a very big thing for us. Uh, another thing is for any transactions on the marketplace or tipping, direct tipping to artists, that will be in Noom, everything that you do in our ecosystem will, will be, Noom is the, is the token for that. So we have governance, we have for the tipping, for the micropayments, for any of the trading in the marketplace, for the, for the, um, for the IP rights or the collectibles. Um, and then also part of the token gating access, that Noom token is used for that. Another big thing, and this is down the road, but it is definitely on the roadmap, is right now, part of the ecosystem is centralized. Our ethos is everything we do is leading towards full decentralization. However, with a caveat, we will not let it impact the end user experience. If something is not ready for fully decentralization to where it impacts negatively a user experience, we're not gonna do it yet. Prime example, file storage. If we wanted to host or we wanted to store all of the audio files, the, the data, the videos, everything from a media side, when, when artists upload everything to a decentralized storage solution, uh, had we, we originally were in talks with, with Filecoin um, or Storage, excuse me, Storage, um, to, to utilize their storage solution. Well, they were down for three days. Well, that's that might seem you know minute, but if you're talking on a consumer level scale, that's millions of users that for three days don't get to consume something, which means that artists are missing out on money, which that's a bad thing. That's a bad user experience, so we can't do that. But we do know that we have projects we're working and we're, we're in talks with that we will provide decentralized storage solutions. So what does this look like? You would have to have Noom tokens to be able to run storage nodes to store Noom data, oh, right? Yeah. So it's a very similar, I like very it. similar. Yeah, so that's a, that's a big one. Um, and then also we haven't talked about either a Hydra head or a sidechain solution for all the transactions on Noom. If you, so what does that look like um, for anybody on Ethereum, right? So Cardano has, a, has some scaling solutions um, a Hydra head is very, that's a niche thing where you open a head, everything that happens inside of that gets closed at the end and then it gets settled on a layer one. That's almost kind of like a roll up, but not really a roll up. Um, and then we have side chains, which is essentially, um, basically you get to spin up a whole new Cardano node, which is like a cop carbon copy of the Cardano blockchain, but you get to change all the parameters, i.e. I block size, the, the settlement time, all those things. So theoretically, you can make it to where on the side chain, you open it up and everybody, the transactions are like microscopic as far as the, the transaction fees. And that makes it very cost efficient for it to run. And then you can settle it and have the base layer for your settlement. All that to say, um, we're, we're exploring that. So what would that look like if you wanted to be a, a Noom node operator to actually process all the transactions on the marketplace and everything that's going through, which 
if we reached our, our adoption phase that we, we expect, that's millions and millions of transactions on a daily basis. And that's utility. Exactly. Yeah. You have to have new tokens for that. And there, there's, there's that, that part of the equation. So there is mass, and that's, that's utility for the infrastructure. So you have storage infrastructure, transaction infrastructure for the nodes. Think of it like Sunday swap scooper model. That's a federated node operating model. But all of that requires new tokens. So there, there's a lot going on with this um, for the new token. And, and yes, only right now, currently, is governance that is actually an, an active daily use case for. Um, very, very shortly, though, for um, being able to uh, essentially other parts of the product that are turning on very soon, you'll have an option for Noom with that as well, which might lead to a discount in, in, the, in the cost of whatever that service is. Um, so, but that's, that is, that's as much as I can give on that, uh, yeah. but that's very much Thank so you. that's part of it. Yeah. I don't want to ask you one of the most popular question when Binance, I don't want, I don't want to ask you <laughs> when Binance, but my community want to know, is there any chance maybe this year to some, uh, some exchange or something like that? We're already on DEXs in Cardano. I will say that. So men swap, Sunday swap, Muesli swap. Uh, I think wing riders. So those are all the decentralized exchange. The big, they're not all of them, but those are the big ones on Cardano. So you can you can find our token there. The short answer is uh, potentially for for centralized exchanges. Um, it's on our radar, and uh, we've we've you know we've chatted with people. So there is a <clears throat> there is a monetary component typically to centralized exchanges, and I, I will say even in our Discord and in our Telegram groups. For Noom, um, I've said this publicly, so I don't have a problem saying it here on your on your uh, podcast uh, or your YouTube channel. How, but you know, we have um, so much money in in our our war chest to do things, and part of us being good stewards of our funds is we we need to make sure our product is launched, and that part of that means distribution service, marketplace for trading the royalties, and then our own streaming service. I like right. we're, we're able to pay more per stream, right? For those for those streaming royalties. And so one would argue that to spend a million dollars for a Binance listing, if that might be the price, um, or for another exchange or KuCoin or whatever, um, that might be considered being bad stewards of our funding, especially whenever we haven't put out the product yet, right? And so yeah. we won't have a fully fleshed product before we spend any extemporaneous money just to get a token listing for us. And like you said, it's not about token price go up. It's about delivering on our, our, our vision. One of the most important question, question in this interview. And then I have one more, but this one is for my community. The most yeah. important, we have some information that you apply on killer whale show. <laughs> any, yeah. any expectation? What do you think? Uh, do, do you have any chance there? Uh, we, are we happy apply to see we, because it's I, great project. It's great project. I I'll be honest with you. I think we would kill it um, on the show because again, like I said, we're actually our first product. It's a consumer grade product that has a better price point than most of them with more value prop. So just one portion of our entire roadmap has more tangible value than just about any other any other quote crypto project out there. In my personal opinion. So um, I think we'd be great for the show. I don't know if we'll get accepted or not, but we did apply. Um, you know, I think uh, it would be great exposure for us because musicians understand the value prop of it. Um, it's up to us to make sure the consumers understand it and it's and it's they're appropriately educated. So where where do you see your company two years from from today? Two years from today. Two years if, from today. If we are successful, in I don't want to speak about some. You know. Uh, we have halving, we have price, we have a bull run. I don't want to speak oh, yeah. like 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 some crypto guy who just want to make money. I, I want to yeah. speak with you some some like some investor, some you know, where's your goal two years yeah. from today with your company? I want us to become a household name. I want people, I want every person to have that little icon, that app on their phone, and I want them to be using it. That's what I want. Was that, that TikTok? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that was not TikTok. Um, there you go. That's my. That's what I want. That's what success looks like in two years. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure.
You're welcome. Oh, this was fantastic. Uh, you're a, you, you, I love your energy, man. This is, this is a lot of fun, truly. Mm -hmm.